Hey everyone, this is the part 7 in the series of videos in which I am talking about the best practices which we should try to follow when we are programming in the C-sharp language and if you still haven't watched the previous parts then you can do that by following the links which are given in the description of this video and without wasting any more time let's get on to the first best practice that this video has to offer so the first one is switch case should not have too many lines of code and we can use a method instead of all of those lines to make the code easier to read and understand in this example these switch cases have too many lines of code which are being executed for different values of this input and if the switch case has too many lines of code to do something then what we can do is we can extract a method from the case logic this will make the code look more cleaner and easier to manage so now the code lines are being replaced with individual methods and these methods are essentially doing the same thing which the cases were doing previously but now the logic has been extracted into a method and the added benefit to this approach is that if this logic needs to be executed from somewhere else then we don't really need to duplicate the code we can simply call this method from anywhere else and this has been done for all of the different cases now as i mentioned in the previous video we can always utilize functional programming whenever we are working with the switch cases. So to do that what we can do is we can create a dictionary and then map these input values with anonymous functions or delegates and I will show you how that can be done. So this dictionary is mapped with the input values as keys and the methods which need to be executed as the values which are associated with these keys. Now instead of having a switch block, we can simply write an if condition that if the input value exists as a key in this dictionary, then we will simply need to execute the method which is associated with this value. So this is the way in which we can handle complex and large switch blocks. The second best practice for this video is never have empty catch blocks. If possible, at least log the generic errors to a text file. It makes sense to use try catch blocks when we suspect that something out of our control may mess things up but make sure to properly handle the issues when something bad eventually happens in the try block. So as you can see in this example there is a try catch block but this catch block is not really doing anything and it is a lazy way to handle a catch block. You must be thinking that why would anyone do that but you will be surprised to know the number of times I have seen these empty catch blocks. Handling catch blocks makes it easier for us to fix issues which arise in the production environment. To do that we can either use a dedicated custom exception manager to log every error or we can simply write every message to a simple text file. Now this code is much better than the previous one because we are not leaving this error to be lost into oblivion. We are actually handling it so that the devs can look at it later whenever any issues will come up in the production environment. The third and last one for this video is that asynchronous methods should have async suffix. It is simply because if there are two variants of a method, one async and another non-async, then the intelligence can let us know which one is which. Even when the async method is not having a pair of non-async method, having async suffix makes it easier for us to know if we need special handling for the async method or not. So in this example, there are two variants of this do something method. The first one is the synchronous one and this is the async one. Now when the time comes to use them, then the intelligence can easily let us know which is async and which is non-async or synchronous one. So that was it for this video guys. If you think you have understood the contents then please be sure and place a like on this video. Also use the comments area for any questions and please subscribe to this channel if you always want to be the first one to know when the new videos will come out and I will see you in the next one. Till then have a great day.